here to discuss with you today uh, DC to DC charging. Now with the uh, evolution of caravans over the last 30 years we've seen uh, caravan and camping change dramatically. We've gone from the old gas lantern and the two burner barbecue that we used to take with us to now taking away 12 volt fridges and electric uh, microwaves and all sorts of electric gadgets that need to run off power. So even our four wheel drives have evolved in that time where we've gone from a simple dual battery system in the engine bay of a vehicle which would bring the batteries into parallel. We've now gone to moving that battery down into the caravan. So if we go back about oh, 10 years or so ago, the biggest battery that you would option your van up to would be roughly a 55 amp hour. Now we're looking at batteries exceeding at well over 300 amps. So one of the biggest questions we get asked at BM Pro is, how do I charge my caravan system? Well, the answer for you is right here in these two products. We have our Mini Boost, which is a 20 amp continuous DC to DC charger. And there's also a booster inbuilt as well. So it'll take any voltage drop from the tow vehicle and boost it up to the correct charge rate of 14.4. Very, very simple to install. Simply just goes into our auxiliary inputs on our J35 or on our BP35 series charger. Then we move on to our Mini Boost Pro. Our Mini Boost Pro is a 30 amp DC to DC solar combined charger. What does combined mean? Well, it'll do solar and DC charging together. So on a DC charge only, it'll do a 20 amp, just like his little brother. But uh, with our solar panels connected, we can really thump in a charge up to 30 amps. Absolutely ideal for when we've got those bigger battery banks in our vans, or even if we're going into the, the new market of the, the lithium batteries or that sort of thing, where we need a higher charge rate of that 14.6 mark. This is absolutely ideal. Has a sense cable that allows us to choose our battery chemistry. So we can either choose AGM, gel batteries, or even the lithium style battery setup. So it is fully compliant. Both units are compatible with our J35 and BP series. So simple inline unit from the vehicle through to the J35. All you've got to do is make sure you've got the correct wire size from the engine bay all the way back to ensure that you're going to minimize that voltage drop over that distance. All right, so I want to discuss with you maximizing your DC to DC charge to your van batteries. Now there's a couple of ways that the Mini Boost Pro can be used because it's quite smart like that. So either one, if we're only after a DC to DC charge, because remember your J35 and your BP series already have a solar input on them for the panels on the roof of the van. So if you're not really wanting to use the solar card inside the unit, you can simply wire it straight up to the J35 auxiliary input or the AX input on the BP35. Now, if we're really wanting to maximize and take full advantage of that um, auxiliary solar blending, then we need to use a couple of more or one more other product to be able to assist. And that is our BC300 shunt and comlink. And the reason we use this is a BC300 shunt simply gets wired to the negative post of your battery output. It essentially becomes a new negative on your battery. Why do we do that? Well, that's so it can report back to your J35 or your BP system exactly what, what charge is coming into the battery and what's going out. So if you punters out there are thinking of using uh, inverters to run your coffee machines, CPAP machines, or want to use additional solar to come in, that is a, the fellow that you need right there. So that simply becomes a new negative of the battery. And we simply wire the um, Mini Boost Pro straight to that unit. And that will then give you a full auxiliary solar blending charge through to your system and will record back to your J35 system. Now this can also 
like I've said before, be used completely independent of these two systems. So you may have um, an older uh, system which has got an ST20 in it, or even something like our Genius, which is heavily wide, widely used still to this day within the industry. So these can simply be used in conjunction with your ST and your Genius without any dramas. So another good product to complement our Mini Boost Pro, especially if we're charging through our Genius or through our ST range, is the Battery Check Pro. It has an internal shunt that will allow you to measure the current coming and going out of our system and report to you all the correct information on our mobile phone. So that is a fantastic product. It is also lithium compatible. And again, like all of our product here that's been featured today, it is Australian made. So we're gonna go over some points now on things that we come across in customer service that seem to be generally asked questions from you guys out there. So first of all is with the Mini Boost, how simple is it to wire in um, for the sort of electrical novice right through to the auto elect? Well, it's very straightforward. It simply gets put in line. So we've got two wires in, two wires out. A couple of packets of yellow spade connectors, obviously with correct fusing. If required, you may already find that the uh, main line in from the vehicle is already fused. So with the unit itself, it contains a 30 amp fuse in the back of the unit. So it's also protected that way. But it simply just goes straight into our AX input on our J35 and same with the BP35. Um, shortening of the wires. Look, try to keep it at about that length if you can. It'll uh, create less resistance over the over the unit, so uh, always good to uh, give yourself a maximum wire if you can, sort of thing. So we're looking at our Mini Boost Pro, and we say, how do we know if our Mini Boost Pro is working off solar, or if it's working off the car, or if it's just working at all? So on the front of the unit, we have our three lights. So we have our fault light, our auxiliary, and our solar. If we're connected to the vehicle, we'll get a nice long green pulse. If we're uh, separated from our vehicle, but the unit is still connected to our battery in the van, it'll be a rather quick pulse on the green light itself. And if we've got a, a red light, we've obviously got a fault somewhere. So the, the fault could be a number of things, including it will tell you if the battery itself has dropped a cell. So it's pretty smart that way. For the solar side of things, we have a blue light. So that'll give us a blue flash, depending on what state of charge, obviously, the uh, battery's in as well. So very similar to the uh, auxiliary input, it'll give you a green long flash if we're uh, charging off solar, or a rapid flash if we're connected. Another question we tend to get asked quite a lot on is, what size cable should I be using to install these devices. Well, at the end of the day, you need to have a look at the size of the run that you're going to be running the cable. So there is some great online calculators to help you calculate the distance and whether you're going to be using a six mil cable or a, an eight BNS or a, or a six AWG. So there, there's some really good calculators online to help you decide as to what size cable suits your run, but it is crucial to ensure that you measure your run to ensure that you're minimizing your voltage drop over that distance. So even though our mini boost range will boost the charge up, you don't wanna heat the cable up. You don't wanna create resistance in the line. So, you know, give your system the best possible charge that it can possibly have. So by that, Find yourself a good online calculator or, you know, use old pen and paper, but there is mathematical formulas available uh, online on the web uh, that will help you choosing the uh, correct cable size. Another question that we tend to get asked quite a fair bit in customer service is fusing. What size fuse suits the application? 
that sort of thing. So we definitely recommend a minimum of 40 amp fuse on our Mini Boost Pro, 30 amp fuse on our Mini Boost. Now, with saying that, fusing can be a bit of a personal choice as well. There's two main types that we tend to use more and more in the industry. We've got our bladed fuse and then our A&L mini style fuses. Again, it's personal choice. Myself, I prefer the A&L fusing because it gives us a greater surface area and it actually bolts in using 8mm bolts into the actual fuse holder itself. Bladed fuses can be a little bit hit and miss through the contact points there and you know they're great for automotive or, or smaller applications like the likes of your ingle fridge or, or things like that but when we start getting up to high current I'd be starting to look at something like that but again it comes down to personal choice. So another question that we tend to get asked is if I want to use portable solar panels on my Mini Boost Pro why do I need to use a BC300 shunt and comlink? Okay, well to explain it, with the J35 system, we actually have a blocking diode built into the back of the unit. This is designed to allow voltage to go in but not to come out. Now, with any solar regulator, even in the Mini Boost Pro, it needs to see a battery voltage and it can't actually read the battery voltage correctly through the AUX inputs. So the best way to maximise your system is to simply install the shunt and comlink into the system. So the BC300 will now become the new earthier system and therefore will allow you to wire direct to the battery your Mini Boost Pro. Another question we do tend to get asked quite a fair bit is the blue wire on our Mini Boost. Does that need to be hooked up at all? In most applications, it probably doesn't. It is an ignition sense wire. It's not an ignition wire as in the sense it will turn the mini boost off. It is designed for vehicles with smart alternators that when we are cruising down the highway are shutting right down to as low as 12.2 volts, that sort of thing. So this wire will actually allow the mini boost to drop down a 12 volt input, therefore giving you a charge right through to the caravan battery and uh, making sure that when you do stop that night, you've got a fully charged battery and you're, you're ready to enjoy your uh, weekend away. Battery chemistry is another one that we tend to get asked quite a fair bit. How do we set our system up for AGM, gel or lithium battery profiles? Well, straight out of the box, our Mini Boost Pro is set up for AGM. And it is simply just a matter of taking a green wire here and connecting it onto our negative post of the battery and that'll adjust the profile to suit your gel style batteries. To go to lithium, we simply take that same wire and put it onto the positive side of the battery. So this is a great way to future proof your camper trailer, caravan, motorhome, whatever you're thinking about putting this into, it'll allow you to upgrade your batteries down the track. Thanks.